Hello, this video is about the art market and how the art market works and why some artists become very famous and the reasons why this, this occurs. Now, uh, if you want to know about the art market, it's, it's not a good idea to ask art dealers because they obviously have a vested interest in putting their point of view and you'll just get the conventional view. It's not a good idea to ask art critics either because again they work, they tend to work with art dealers and uh, art dealers and art critics are part of the of the art market so they're, 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 if you ask them for their opinion what the what is the art market all about why are some artists very famous become very famous you'll get a very prejudicial view uh, and you won't you won't really end up uh, knowing what what actually what the art market is all about and what the art market does now there's, there's two type of buyers in the art market the uh, there's these, the, the, on a very simple level, there's, there's people who just have a home of some kind, they have a home, they have a house, a flat, whatever, and they just want a, to buy a, a painting, say, to put on the wall, two or three maybe, and they don't want to spend too much money, they haven't really got a great deal of money to, to spend. They don't know, they generally don't know anything about art. They just think that the better, the more, the more photographic a painting is or a drawing, then the more it is what they would call proper art. So they tend to be put off, for example, generally they tend to be put off by abstracts because they feel that are they being conned by an abstract? Is it proper art? The, the answer to these questions, these two questions, is that... Uh, the more photographic a piece of art is, whether it's a painting or a drawing, the more likely it is to have no artistic value whatsoever because the artist has really turned himself or herself into a camera and is merely reproducing a graphic scene. So the artists that do that type of work are not really artists. Uh, they are graphic illustrators would be a better term, a better description of them. Now, when it comes to fa the, the, the other type of art buyer, they, these are, funny enough, I mean, they're not particularly interested in art. Again, they don't know a lot about art. They rely on critics and the art dealers to sort of steer them into a particular direction of what they're going to buy. But uh, that's, that's not too important about these, say, these very wealthy art buyers because what they're interested in is buying pieces of art, works of art, that will keep the value, retain the value, increase in value. And what they're, what they're looking for is a, a, a store of wealth, very much like buying gold, for example, gold, diamond or property maybe. So um, that now... As for famous artists, how, how do some artists become very famous? You look at the work, you go into a, 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 a contemporary art exhibition or even an old, you know, one showing work from 100 years ago or, or 500 years ago, and there's certain artists that are very famous. And why you look at the work, particularly the modern artists, and you think to them yourself, maybe, this looks quite childish, it looks... You know, if you're really honest with yourself, it looks rubbish. <laughs> so why on earth would investors, wealthy investors, pay millions of pounds for the, the these type of, of paintings, which may be possibly abstract if it's, if it's modern artwork. It could well be um, abstract or semi-abstract maybe, or something like Picasso, where he sort of... Um, Instead of painting uh, an actual photographic face, he would disassemble the faces and rearrange them into sort of a slightly geometric sort of uh, um, uh, painting. You know, so it's semi-abstract. You know, you know, you can see that it's it's a painting of a, a person's face, but 
very stylized, very sort of chopped around, maneuvered and reassembled as it were. Um, so uh, that that was, I suppose, if you were unkind, you could, you could say that that was um, Picasso's gimmick. That's the gimmick he found himself, same as Jackson Pollard, who was promoted by the American government as a as a national icon, artistic icon, and he just merely threw paint around on onto the canvas. Uh, so, you know, why 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 is he why has he become so famous? So the thing is with uh, with 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 great artists, the reason why they they are are famous is that first of all, to become a famous artist. You've got to be promoted by the art critics. That's where it starts. So it's obviously only a limited number of artists who can become great artists. Obviously, otherwise, you know, the, the whole point is that they're exclusive. There's a a relatively small number of these artists, mostly men actually. Very few, very few female. You get Bridget Riley who did these optical illusion type paintings, which some people like, some people don't. Uh, so that's where it starts. It starts with the with the art critics, but they tend to work hand in glove with the art dealers. So they 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 spot, say for example, they spot a particular artist, and they say yes, you know that's that's we're going to promote that kind of artist. And it gets to a level after a few years, it gets to a level where that artist becomes a brand just like um heinz heinz uh, heinz brand heinz food brand soup brand for example or nestle chocolate you know so they become a brand they are an identifiable brand and their art their actual artwork their output what they produce uh, trans transcend it, it moves from being mere paintings, mere works of art, into an asset, and that's what these wealthy art buyers are looking for. They're looking for art that is not. They're not really not interested really what the art is. Whether it's a smear across with a brush, you know, a household brush of uh, emulsion paint, even if it's just brushed across, that's okay. The the value. The value of these these artists' work is not in the not in the work that they produce. That's immaterial. What they produce, the value is their is their signature, and it's done it's done by them. And that's the reason why you get uh, artists like Damien Hirst, for example, who doesn't really. I mean, he's got a big output, so physically he wouldn't be able to produce all the work that he produces. But so he has other artists and art workers produce paintings uh, on his behalf for him, and he really signs them. So that's where the value of the art is, and that that that's that's the reason. That's the reason. As I say, it, it, it's it's uh, art from a particular artist that has the value. And as I say, why their why their why their um, why their value? The value is in the artist's signature. It's by them, which is a, a, a relatively limited number. So when you go into a modern exhibition, for example, you see some of these modern arts. You know, it may be well established. It may be an abstract artist who's been you know maybe 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 dead but he's been going for 30 40 50 years the, the, the works on the art on the wall and quite often you will see you'll see a viewer looking at one of these paintings usually a man actually he will be stood there for quite a time he may be sat perhaps on a bench or he may be stood there and he's looking at this artwork and his rational part of his mind is saying to him this is complete and absolute rubbish, you know. But another part of his his mind will be saying, "Yes, but this is worth eight to ten million pounds." So there must be something in this piece of artwork, this painting, that I can't see. There must be some kind of value there, but I can't. And you can see his two parts of his mind are trying to reconcile the 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 the. The logical and the emotional sort of turmoil in his mind might be he may he may be an artist himself possibly and he's thinking to himself 
I think I could do an art, uh, a painting like that. Um, if I did, would, would, would I be famous? Would it be a good idea for me to sort of do something like that, copy it, and I will become, become famous? And the answer, of course, to that is, even if he'd done work exactly the same, if not better, he still wouldn't become famous. And that's because he hasn't been promoted by the art critics, and he hasn't been put forward to these very wealthy buyers as, a, as an artist to buy. And that's, that's, that's the reason. And the thing is, of course, when, he, when, when a viewer is looking at one of these paintings and thinking to themselves, this is complete and utter rubbish, uh, he, he's really, the viewer is really missing the point entirely. Because it's immaterial what the painting is. This is, this is the whole point. It's immaterial what, what it is. The value, the value of the painting is in the artist's signature. It's by that particular artist who has been promoted, as I say, by the art critics, put forward by these very suave, charming art dealers. And, uh, and they, they, it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, actually, because once these, 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 these uh, artists become a brand, and their their paintings become a an asset rather than just a mere painting then the, the rich person will buy the painting keep it a few years it will at least keep pace with inflation and probably almost certainly increase in value above inflation that's what these rich people want when you've got tens of millions of pounds hundreds of millions in some cases what do you do with this with this money? You, you can buy property that has to be maintained, you have to have staff, you have to do the garden, you have to insure it. It's a hassle. Buy a super yacht, again, a lot of man maintenance. You can get fed up after a few trips on one of these, these uh, super yachts traveling along these desolate oceans. It can be terribly boring. You know, these are, these are, these are, these are entrepreneurial, uh, energetic people that have made often made their own money um, by by a private aircraft again it has to be maintained uh, by a fleet of classic cars again it have, they have to be run they have to be maintained so works of art which you can put in say to a, in a free port in, in in Switzerland and not pay any tax when you when you sell it eventually that that quite a, it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good investment. You can you can lock your money away in one of these paintings, and uh, as I say, fairly fairly trouble free, almost tr trouble free sort of an asset. So as I say, to go back to this viewer who's looking at this painting in an exhibition, that painting or any other painting, you know, a whole number of them. As I say, he's, he's, he's approaching it in the wrong view. It's no good looking at a painting and think, trying to analyse why it's so valuable from the look of it, because quite often the, the look of it, what, what's on the surface of the canvas, the way the, the oil paint or whatever has been put on is immaterial. The value, as I say, is in the artist's signature. So if we, ta if we take, for example, the Impressionist, for example, who uh, were popular, what, 1700 years ago, whatever. Uh, basically, I mean, their, their, their paintings were, they were different, obviously different from the, the they, they were a lot less informal than the Victorian paintings. Uh, there was a novelty there, the, the, the colours were brighter, the way the paint was put on, but basically impressionistic paintings, the impressionists, all they really did actually is just paint pretty pictures, which is what some people want. A lot of people like them now, they very, very popular now, weren't popular in the, when, when they were painted, they weren't particularly pop, popular. It's like Van Gogh, he, he wasn't popular at all. He just sold one painting to his brother who was an art dealer and that was it. The, the, the amazing thing about the work of Van Gogh is that, it, that the works actually survived over all the decades. So that we have them today, but I mean Van Gogh, very creative, uh, based his work on uh, natural, you know, landscapes, um, interior scenes, still life. But the way he painted it, he painted his his 
his works were very creative, you know, he may well have been mad, possibly technically mad, uh, but, you know, it, it gave us a new perspective, a new way of looking at things. Uh, so, um, and then if you go back further, you go back to the Renaissance, for example, I mean, the, the patrons, the, the patrons who uh, commissioned these artists, I mean, they, they were members of the, they were the ruling elite in those days. And the function, of course, of religion was religion, organised religion, which has got nothing to do with the spiritual entity, what we call God, got nothing to do with that. The religion, you know, religion is a sort of a man-made systems of belief, as they call it. Uh, religion basically was the first sort of form of government, you know, operating at a, a psychological level to keep people in order. And these, the ruling elite in those days, they commissioned these paintings and they, the, the, what they, what they sort of told the masses was that they were, they were put in positions of power by divine, you know, by divine, they were there by the will of God, they'd been appointed by God, and uh, that's why they should uh, obey, obey the ruling elite and do as they, as they were told. So the function of these paintings in the Renaissance times, the, the religious base, uh, paintings were that that that's why that that type of subject uh, was painted and the actual paintings themselves these aren't particularly difficult to do this this style it, they look I mean they're very photographic and this was of course way before cameras so technically they were very good these were these were very good graphic illustrators people like my, Michelangelo Leonardo da Vinci not really artists as such, although there was a creative element, obviously, they had to think up the sort of biblical scenes, what they painted. So I say they could, they could be painted these days just like that, if, if you have the time or the inclination to do them. Uh, the, the, the value, of course, is the age of them and that, and that era. This is a thing about old paintings, even in Picasso's days, you know, in Pica the ones Picasso painted way back in the 20s and the 30s, it was that era, so these paintings have a feel of that era, which is completely gone, never to be, never to return that particular era. So each era, for example, in, in England, the, 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 the atmosphere and the feel of the 1940s is, is totally gone. Uh, the, the atmosphere and the feel of the 1950s, which was a very cosy, very cosy decade, a very safe decade, a, de a decade of regeneration. And then we got to the, the 60s, which was the high point, I think you could say, of the working class era. Uh, since then, we've we we've, we've dropped back. We've we've regressed into the present day. For example, through the 80s, it started this movement, uh, and through the 90s, and now we live in a, an age of what you might call neo feudalism, where the working classes are absolutely screwed totally down. The 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 control device for that. Uh, is just keep people short of money. That's that's the easiest way to control people. But as I say, to go back to to go back to paintings, that this is why some some artists, it's not their art that's famous or worthwhile. It's just that they have become a brand, and their their paintings, their work of arts, have become assets. So you know, if you look at a if you look at a kilo. Uh, of gold for example it's trying to sort of it's like looking at a kilo of gold and thinking oh it's, it's valuable because of the shape because of the color is it really worth say 30,000 pounds is this kilo of gold really you know I can understand why it's it's so valuable it's such a lovely color it's such a lovely shape obviously it's, that's immaterial the, the value of gold is the fact that it's an asset, it's just metal. Yeah, some obviously has some uses, many, many uses, but uh, so is so is lots of different metals, aluminium, iron, steel, stainless steel, chrome, but 
gold, as I say, as a metal, has a certain value because it's an asset. And this is the same with art. So famous artists are artists who have been promoted, they've been put forward, they've been promoted by the art critics who work hand in glove with art dealers, the big international art dealers who are, are very smooth with these, these, these uh, polished manners, polished uh, speaking the way they speak, the mannerisms, the social mannerisms that they have. And uh, the, the very, very rich people aren't. They, they're not really, they don't take much notice of that particular thing. All they really want, of course, they, they want to rely on these art dealers to tell them, you know, what to buy. And they're looking, as I say, for an asset to put their, their money in into so that it will at least keep pace with inflation and hopefully beat inflation. It's a fairly worry-free worry, uh, worry asset investment. So that's the, so next time you go into an art gallery, it's no good just looking at the famous, the work of a famous artist and trying to understand uh, why it's worth so much money. The, the value, as I say, is in the signature. And the, I mean, these days, actually, my impression is that there's, there's artists, tens of thousands of artists all over the world and they're all, they, they sit down every now and again, probably with a cup of coffee maybe, or something stronger possibly even, and they think to themselves, what can I do, what, what kind of gimmick can I get, what, what can I do, how can I put art down to make myself famous and get the attention of art critics and become a famous artist, and of course that's not the way... That's not the way the system works. It doesn't matter how many permutations that they tried. And they may well do. Some of them may well do marvellous art. But they're never ever going to be famous unless the art critics promote them and the dealers who work hand in glove, of course, with the art critics in these posh magazines. You've seen these posh where they, they do a splash, don't they, on a... A particular artist, usually with a very foreign name, you know, perhaps Japanese or some kind of uh, peculiar, almost unpronounceable name. That 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 is the the the, the next really great artist, and that becomes a self fulfilling prophecy, of course. Uh, and that's that's the way that that is the artwork. So if you're an ordinary person, you know, just go out buy a particular painting that you just like the look of and you, you know, it gives you pleasure to look at. The purpose of course of art is to communicate, it's to communicate something just as music, literature, uh, poetry, it's to communicate something. So a painting should sort of say something to you. Uh, my particular abstracts are spiritual based I, these days, I'm getting older, I suppose, I, I frequently get images from the spiritual world. I don't know, I never used to believe that I thought it was complete rubbish, that type of thing, people seeing ghosts and things like that. I just prefer to call them images, they just appear to me, they, I seem to be in contact with the, with the spiritual aspect of life. There's far more than just this round lump of, rock what we what we live on what we call the planet earth and uh, you know i i don't believe i know that there is a spiritual entity what we loosely refer to as god uh, which is i don't think he's an old man with a with a beard in heaven you know that type of thing he's he sees the he's the creator of all life creator of all the planetary system the whole universe it doesn't have a top or bottom or sides or anything else it goes on forever and ever which is a thing that we find almost our minds don't can't can't think in those terms but there is a spiritual aspect to life what most people just they just blanket they don't even they don't they they, they just they all, all they want to do is to think about what they know and that's the problem with scientists these days they won't let the minds drift off because you're only going to get in contact with the spiritual aspect of life if you just let your mind totally relax and you you you, you sort of pick up these you, you you pick up this spiritual aspect of life 
it's almost like a kind of a, an a, an a ten, antenna. Uh, you 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 kind of if you get to this a certain kind of state of mind where you, where your mind is completely open and you can receive these thoughts. That's the trouble with the, as I say with scientists these days. They 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 would only think about what they know and they won't let their minds they won't let the minds open up and and. Uh, think about, let the mind just drift like, like Albert Einstein did. He spent hours just letting his mind be completely open to see what thoughts would come into his mind. And uh, that, that's, that's the way, if you want to get creativity, that is the way, because that's how you're going to get... There's, there's only so much on this global Earth, this, this round planet that, you know, what we know, we know, and we want more knowledge. We want more. We want more uh, input from, as I say, the spiritual sphere. That, it, as I say, if you open your mind, you're receptive. These thoughts will come. Creative thoughts will come into your mind and can be very, very useful. But as I say, that 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 is the art market. That's the way the art market works. Critics promote certain artists. Dealers do the same, they put the work to the very rich people who then buy them as assets and it's as simple as that. Thank you.